God knows you. He knows what you're thinking, what you just thought, and what you're about to think. He knows everything there is to know about you. He created you. He knit you together. You are exactly what He wanted you to be. And when the world tells you that you don't matter, that you aren't smart enough, that you aren't pretty enough or strong enough, just remember who created you. And when you feel like you've really messed up and nothing seems to make sense anymore, remember that the God that created the whole entire universe created you too. And you are exactly the person he wanted you to be. And welcome to New Life Online. My name is Dave Finley. I'm the pastor at New Life Assembly here in Killarney, Manitoba. And we're so glad that you've joined us online for worship today. Today we're going to be talking about something Canadian. So I'm wearing my Blue Jays jersey. And we're so glad that you are a part of this service. Today we're going to be talking about honor and the way of honor. And we want to uh, continue to um, explain and understand and create a culture of honor in our church, in our personal lives, uh, in our community. And we want to do that today and talk a little bit more about that today. If you'd like more information about New Life Assembly, you can connect with us by texting the word CONNECT to the number 431-400-9585. I have some information. I'd love to send you about our church, and we'll be sure to get that sent out to you today. Would you join with me in prayer, please? Father God, we pray your blessing upon this service today. Speak to our hearts by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for each one that takes part. Thank you, God, that we can experience your peace. We can know your love, and we can have a wonderful experience of your power in our lives today. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen.
What's the one truly Canadian thing you do? Maybe it's cheering for the Blue Jays or the Toronto Raptors, or maybe Canada's national team, the Rough Riders from Saskatchewan. Maybe for you, being Canadian is eating beaver tails covered with maple syrup, or maybe it's having a bowl of poutine. Maybe it's having your picture taken at the Niagara Falls or in the West, maybe at Lake Louise. What are the things that you do that show you're Canadian and that make you proud to be Canadian? One of the things that I think that has happened, sadly, over the last year with COVID and the pandemic and the restrictions and all the difficulties that we've been facing, we have seen that Canada, sadly, has a great lack of respect in many places for its leaders, for those who try to govern us and those who are trying to steer us through perhaps one of the most difficult experiences of our lives. We have seen countless divisions and protests at churches. People have been against the various health orders that have been ordered by the governments. Some pastors and some churches have completely disregarded altogether the health orders, have continued to meet or meet without meeting the safety requirements that are necessary. Sadly, some churches have experienced great divides over these issues, and that's been sad. Things that have been said that may take a very long time for people to recover from. We as Christian believers are usually quite proud to say, God, keep our land glorious and free. And we do tend to honor our leaders when we agree with them. Sadly, it's when we disagree with them that the true notion of honor and respect either is shown or the lack of it is shown. We are not as glorious as we think we are. And we're not as free as we think we are. Now, let me say that our church here in New Life Assembly in Manitoba, in Killarney, we have been very gracious and the people have been very good. And there's been a great sense of unity and harmony over the various issues that have been involved in regards to COVID. But others have not been so kind towards the government and towards the leaders. One pastor has described the government as evil, pure evil. And I sadly have to question my definition of evil and whether our government, who's trying to help us, has been truly evil. There's a lot of scriptural teaching about honoring and respecting our leaders. And we've been looking at that as we've talked about the way of honor in our church, in our community, and in our personal lives, creating a lifestyle and an attitude where people are respected, where people are honored. And we've talked about that. Now, we recognize that, sadly, some of our leaders, even here in Canada, have not always performed or behaved honorably. There have been scandals and shady dealings all throughout our history. And that saddens us, and we certainly recognize it. But it certainly was nothing like it was during the time of the first Christians when the Roman emperors ruled, when the Roman Empire was governed by men who were often violent and bloodthirsty, who were immoral, and who did horrible, horrible things, where Christians suffered tremendously at the hands of the Roman emperors and their soldiers. And yet, the early church was directed and counseled over and over again to honor our leaders and to pay respect to those who were in authority over them. Let's look at some of those today. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1-4 to four says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, 
who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of truth. A few things to take note in this passage of Scripture. We pray for our leaders and we pray for our prime minister and our premier and the various ones that are in authority. But do we often really give thanks for them? Are we thankful for our leaders and for our government and for the land in which we live? Sadly, expressing thanks is not always uh, first on our minds when we think about our leaders. It says as well that we pray and for, and we submit to all those in authority, not just the prime minister, not just the prime premier, but people in our local communities, to those who are in authority, whatever the authority is and wherever that's found. We recognize that. It says that we should live godly lives and peaceful lives. And the Bible reminds us that God wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of truth. I've just been reading a book in the last few days called Tortured for Christ. It tells the story of Richard Wormbrand, a pastor who lived in Romania during the communist times. He was in prison for over 14 years and suffered horrible persecutions, torture, um, horrible things he recounts as to various Christians having suffered for their faith. And I was surprised to read this just last night in my reading. He says it was in prison that we found the hope of salvation for the communists. It was there that we developed a sense of responsibility toward them. It was in being tortured by them that we learn to love them. I have to say that stopped me as I read the passage again and again. It was by being tortured that we learn to love them. I would question how they could ever love those people who did such horrible things to them, and yet they did. And they attempted to minister and share Christ's love even with those who were torturing them and making them suffer for the cause of Christ. God desires that everyone come to him, including our leaders, and we pray for their salvation. We pray that they might come to a knowledge of the truth in Jesus Christ. Another passage of significance for us is Romans chapter 13, verses 6 and 7. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Notice the words that the authorities, let me go back one, are God's servants. God's servants, they serve God in their duties and they give themselves full time to their responsibilities. We are to honor them and respect them. And it speaks to giving to everyone what is owed them. Our leaders, our authorities deserve our respect and deserve our honor. Not always because of their personality or because of what they do, but because of the positions that they hold. In the Old Testament, Daniel chapter 2, we are told that God changes times and seasons. He deposes kings and raises others up. The Bible indicates that while we may participate in the uh, democratic process, we may get involved in party elections and the election process, ultimately we recognize that it's God who sets up authorities, who establishes authorities, who puts people in various places of authority. And so when we disrespect them, we really are disrespecting God. When we mock the leaders of our country, we are really mocking God who put them there. And we need to recognize this very significant fact that we believe God is in control. Listen, Daniel knew what he was talking about. Remember the story. 
Daniel was taken as a young boy from his home to a foreign country where he was made to learn a foreign language, where he ate foreign food, where he worshiped and was taught about foreign gods. And the Bible says that he was sexually molested and mutilated in order to fit into the society in which he was now going to serve. If anybody would have disrespected the authorities, it would have been Daniel. But God established those authorities. The king of Babylon had been chosen by God to bring judgment on the people of Israel. Daniel's friends, some of them were placed into a, a fiery furnace where they were to be executed. Daniel himself was to be executed by put it, being put into a, a den of lions. And yet Daniel honored the king. His friends honored and served the king in various capacities and God used them. There is a political process that we can and should be involved in, but we ultimately remember that it's God who establishes those who are in authority. Finally, another passage we look at is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 and 17. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the innocent talk, or pardon me, the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. That is very specific and very practical language. God wants us to show respect to everyone in authority, and we are not to use our freedom as a means to do evil by disrespecting the government and disobeying the government. We obey the laws of the land, and if we do evil, we suffer for it. That's the biblical teaching. Today, we have an obligation to honor and respect our leaders. Does that mean we're weak and lack faith because we uh, obey the various health orders that have been put out? No, it doesn't. It means, in fact, the very opposite, that we are showing our faith in God and in the leaders that God has established. Today, I also want to add to something to my message, and that is learning to respect and honor those who are different than we are. Canada is a multicultural nation. I read this week that at the start of 2021, our population was 38 million people. And in a few, a number of years, I'm not sure exactly, but they're expecting it to rise to 45 million in the next 20 years. And that by 2100, 180 years from now, they're expecting a population in Canada, should God tarry, of 100 million people. Mostly our growth is through international migration, people coming from other countries and making Canada their home. In the town of Inuvik, 3,200 kilometers north of, uh, pardon me, 200 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle, uh, Inuvik has 49 Arab-speaking Islamic people living in town, and they have Canada and actually the world's most northerly mosque in the middle of their town. Toronto, they say half the population of Toronto is now foreign-born. It's amazing the changes that have taken place in our country in just the last 20 and 30 years. It's been extraordinary to see the growth of our country and to see the diversity of our nation. But sadly, 
we have not always welcomed foreigners into our country. Just last Sunday, a family was mowed down on the streets of London, Ontario, by a crazed 20-year-old white man filled with hatred for Islamic people. That is so evil. And of course, just recently, we have discovered again that over uh, approximately 215 children, their remains have been found buried on a residential school property in Kamloops, BC. And they're suggesting that there are many more across the country. Sadly, in our past, we have not always honored the First Nations people. That is for sure. We need to learn to honor those who are different from us. We need to learn to honor those of different cultures. We need to learn something about their culture. Uh, we need to learn something about their holidays. We need to learn something about their families and how they work and how they survive and what's important to them. We need to make deliberate attempts to get to know people of different cultures and wel welcome them into our community. And we need to welcome them into our lives and even into our homes. We need to learn to show respect and honor to those people who may be very different than we are. You know, for years, our model of ministry has been going to different worlds uh, different parts of the world with the message of the gospel, telling people about Jesus in places in Africa and Asia. But in the last 20 or 30 years, we have seen the world coming to Canada, coming to go to our universities, coming to live here and take up residency in our country. And someone has suggested could it be that God is bringing the nations of the world to us to learn about Jesus and take him back to their homelands, take him back to their people? What will these people learn about Jesus from us, from our attitudes and from our actions? Do they learn about a loving, caring God who cares for each one of them? Do they learn about God who honors them by sending his son Jesus to die for them? We have an obligation to love our neighbors as ourselves, all of our neighbors.